Hey guys, and welcome back to Oxygen Not Including Clay's Amazing Space Colony Adventure Extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and I've got a touch of hay fever today, so if you hear a little bunged up, don't don't fret about that. But one thing we do need to fret about is once again my duplicates are running out of an airlock that they should not have been able to run out at the beginning of the game. I'm just like, oh Clay, your game is broken. I try and set up all these lovely little systems so that we can keep things running in the most beautiful way possible, but no, no, it turns out that is not the case. So we're gonna reload the game because I could spend some time trying to fix it and make everything work beautiful again but it was literally a bug so what I'm going to go do is go through get get hold of that airlock that we had to begin with and just kind of put it as a top priority that everyone wants to lock the doors all right we're just going to lock everything that way there is at least some sort of visual indication that the uh, system is still working if the lock fails then I don't know that's, that's a thing that we're going to have to just learn to deal with last time we spent most of our time trying to build up this water cooling system literally all it does is it picks up water if it thinks it's too hot uh, takes it up to the anti-entropy heat nullifying device that we have at the top of this stairway pass the water around that and brings it back down we lose about 10 10 degrees centigrade every time we do that little pass so that's uh, pretty cool ZTech doing the work of trying to limit the size of the stable looking pretty good there we're also going to put the fish drop off down we actually put the fish drop off in the wrong place earlier so we didn't really have uh, like uh, the, the full uh, movement of the pakus around we have been catching fish but unfortunately they've not been able to move anywhere because we didn't get that right also look at this crazy little water system we've got on the go here i don't know exactly what was going on with it but it's good enough to make some nice little bit of video for us to watch i, I set the duplicates cleaning up that little bit of polluted water at the top there and that seems to have fixed everything and of course talking of fixing everything another three is inside the power generators going around and distributing microchips to make everything a-okay and super super efficient one of the next problems we're going to have is the fact that we are once again running out of water this just seems to be like a perennial problem for us something that we have literally no way of uh, dealing with uh, but we are going to try and make this uh, thermo anti-entropy nullifying device work a little bit better because one of the things that it needs is hydrogen and one of the things that it doesn't have right now is hydrogen thankfully we're pumping water up here and one of the things the water is made out of you got it it's hydrogen but we also then have a lot of oxygen that we have to deal with and i don't know if you guys have noticed but oxygen is becoming a bit of a problem in my base not the fact that we don't have enough but actually that we've got too much and i don't know what to do with it so we're going to vent most of it out into space i mean this seems like a great idea when you when you have an enclosed system and one of the most valuable resources that you need you have too much of well obviously you're just going to vent it off into space right uh, that's actually a really bad plan i probably should try and do something a little bit better with that i've been uh, toying with the idea of storing gases for a little bit of time now but i just i don't know where i would even put the stuff okay so we've uh, dug quite a large space into the coal biome here this is this is fine this is not really for any reason in particular other than i want these two items next to each other but unfortunately as it was always the way when we're digging in new areas z tech has gone and got himself stuck it's not always z tech but someone goes and gets themselves stuck inevitably every time there's not really much of a problem with it because you just throw down some ladders made with local materials and they go around they grab all the stuff they get themselves out and it's all good and a fun okay so in this little room here we've got an electrolyzer we've got a pump and we've got a filter now the filter is literally just uh, selecting for hydrogen so we make sure we only put the one pure gas into the thermo nullifier there because mainly you know i don't i don't want to break it we can fix it with copper or iron or whatever it is that it needs to be fixed with but that's still not exactly what i'm after i just i, I don't like it uh, i don't like it at all you may have noticed as i go around my base i actually tend to replace all the things that i have built with items that are more uh, acceptable for the area for instance i will filter the hydrogen out of the thermo nullifier so i don't have to repair that at any point anything that's going into a power generation room i make out of gold so they're like less resistant uh, sorry more resistant to the heat and we don't have to worry about them overheating and damaging like that one thing we do need to worry about though is look at my mushrooms yes we've got a shine bug in there and we are having trouble moving out so i built myself a little bit of a lure on the top floor of the the farm there if you will and we are going to try and lure everything out with some uh, phosphorite that's that's all we need to make everything move around one of the other problems we got is our bristle berries are starting to overheat now i knew this was going to become a bit of a problem because we've got the uh the oxygen generation right next to it and of course this produces heat so that's kind of bleeding through something we need to worry about there but one thing we also need to worry about is the fact that i appear to have run out of power and i'm not entirely sure why but having a look around yeah i can actually make out that the reason that it's having so much trouble is the fact that the carbon dioxide is backing up and the reason the carbon dioxide is backing up well all the polluted water is backing up that means that the carbon scrubber can't do its job uh, and we are all having 
pretty bad times there. We're going to leave that just just try and like work its way through if we can because the cold water tanks uh, need a working on. So we've come up to make sure that this gas pump is going to be working A-OK -okay, and it does seem to be working pretty good but I've got a little bit of a problem around the thermo nullifier. The fact that there's so much oxygen is making the uh, transference of the heat a little bit slow. Just a little bit slow. So we need to try and uh, deal with that somehow. I, I don't know exactly how we will deal with it. Maybe try and flood the area with hydrogen and push the oxygen out but of course like putting that much hydrogen in one place is difficult uh, yeah I, I don't know what we're going to do about that it's time to have a look at our research here and decide exactly what it is we want to go through and we were trying to do valve miniaturization because you know I thought that would be nice but no 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 don't worry about it we're going to just move straight on for the space research but the first thing along with the space research is computing and the computing comes with its own inbuilt RS NOR latch that means that the whole system that we built around for the cold water tank practically useless. We could have just used this one item if we had put our research on it. So I was going with the idea of flooding the uh, Nora, the anti-entropy nullifying device with uh with hydrogen to try and make that work. Uh, one of the other problems we've got a little bit of a problem with is the fact that this pump here on the left hand side is made out of copper. I didn't realize that this was the case and the gas that comes out of the natural gas generator is about 150 degrees. So that, that is something that we really need to keep an eye on. Uh, something else that I do, that I should have also thought about but for some reason did not is the fact that that gas vent, uh, that gas filter is also in the same room. And it, for some reason it just didn't click that the two things were would be experiencing the same uh, same systems there. Okay, so with our water starting to actually pile up inside our our tank here, it's time to put in a second liquid pump. The liquid pump on the right, ideally, is just for base-based things. I know that's two base words there, but base-based <laughs> things inside my base will be coming from the pump on the right, and then things outside the base, the carbon scrubber, the um, cooling for the uh, refiner, the metal refiner and stuff like that. That's all coming from the left one. But this does mean we are now doubling our water use and the fact that we haven't doubled our water intake is really, really a bit of a problem. Uh, I'm looking at this thermal nullifier here and I'm noticing that everything is just sort of kicking off at 30 degrees. 30 degrees is pretty hot and it takes me a long time to try and figure out exactly what is going on there and why it is that that is holding at 30 degrees. Not the like minus 30 that I would have imagined it to be but we'll talk about that in a little while because but first we're going to go around and try and find out exactly what is going on in this base when it comes to the various different states of water that we have around. I've got quite a few areas where we have these little flooded areas. I'd like to try and pump this water out into our base so that we can start using it rather than it just being like the waste puddles that they are right now. The largest collections of this wastewater is of course underneath the cooling tank that we have over on the right hand side of our base here and I thought whilst we were putting in the pumps and starting to pump all the water out and stuff like that we might go around and insulate the cold box underneath the cold tank so that hopefully the weasel watts will do a much more efficient job and then whilst also doing all that I was like yeah let's also queue up like another another pump so that we can get the lower stuff moving as quickly as possible and with the addition of that second pump you can see that the uh, clean water pipes are fully full of all the the beautiful stuff that all these duplicates need to make their life beautiful and wonderful which was amazing let me tell you it's something that we've not had for a little while so it's nice to be able to get that done uh, to to keep all the all the like the base uh, base life support sticking over things like the electrolyzer and the carbon scrubbers because they're very much needed the next problem that we have is the lack of oh yeah let's what let's watch this uh, this snow being turned into ice and, and back again repeatedly but one of the problems we had was the fact that the oil pump was not inside oil and we needed to affix uh, that I did that by uh, just breaking down a little bit of a wall and then decided that the water underneath of the coal tank actually really needed to be picked up the second coal tank uh, there seems to be something that I've got with uh, coal tanks I, I just have uh, massive wastewater spillage underneath it is actually because that we put our cold water tanks in cold biomes the cold water tanks get hot because you know we're putting hot water in there to cool them down and then all the ice and stuff around those melts and creates these massive puddles underneath and i was like yeah okay well fair enough we've got cold water here let's just um purify it up to nice water and pump it into the base no problem right sounds like a good plan getting cold water into my base sounds great 
hold that thought because we will come back to it. Yes, indeed we will. It's gonna take a little while to get everything built. And of course, as is always the case with like these great projects, we need to put down a whole bunch of ladders to make sure that everybody can get around. One of the other problems that I've got is like the snow just keeps on falling into the water, which isn't the biggest problem until you actually want water to flow over the top of it when it starts draining down. Uh, so it's something I'm gonna preemptively dig out. So this thermal nullifier over here, we have we have several problems with it. We have problems with the with the oxygen, and we have problems with the polluted water. Now the polluted water, nice and easy to fix. The oxygen, not so easy to fix. Thankfully, during a bit of research, we managed to get one of these uh, gas element detectors. So what I'm going to do is set up a pipe underneath the thermal nullifier, put down a bunch of airflow tiles, and try and extract nothing but oxygen from it, leaving the hydrogen there. I actually think I'm going to end up doing it in a in a different way, where I go, hey, if it's not not high and turn the pump on because obviously it's not just oxygen that I want to shift it's oxygen carbon dioxide natural gas polluted oxygen anything that ends up in there that is not hydrogen I want to get rid of so that not hydrogen is probably a much better system to put in place many episodes ago when we were first digging out the oil tank down the bottom here we actually got into a bit of a situation where we had a bit of a flood you guys may or may not actually remember that but I ended up where we had to mop up a whole bunch of oil and so I am gonna put a bottle open uh, a bottle bottle emptier sorry down in next to the oil pump so that we can like just sweep up all of those excess oil bottles put them into somewhere nice and get rid of them so yes i'm going to do is separate the two water systems all right now they're kind of both being over over pressurized and that's that's not the system we want uh, one pump is working overtime while the second pump is not doing any work at all and i was wondering what was happening with all the water because most of it was not ending up in our research tables and this is where i actually wanted it to be but of course we had two uh, sorry, four algae deoxygenators down the bottom. The algae terrarium, sorry, not deoxygenate. Algae terrariums down the bottom. These take in water and output carbon dioxide. I mean, that's all good, but we've got carbon scrubbers now, which are much, much better. So I've actually asked the duplicates to get rid of the carbon, uh, the algae terrariums because they're just a waste of water. Um, and also split the two water systems apart. It was uh, getting a little bit ridiculous, the two water systems being joined together there. So I asked them to split apart. One thing I did notice is that it was not Tommy who came along and did the plumbing. Despite the fact that Tommy is our base plumber who so who could come along and empty pipes without destroying the water without throw, spilling the water everywhere sorry um, but no that that wasn't the person who came and did it and I don't know if that counts as a game bug or whether I've got my priorities wrong or if the, anything like that is probably my priorities let's let's be honest here but uh, yeah it wasn't Tommy one other thing that I'm gonna do you see this uh, transport pipe that we've had like threatening to connect underneath the uh, the oil there we're gonna we're gonna actually finally get it connected okay so this system is finally starting to look good down here you can see that we've got a hydrogen uh, detector down there we're going to stick a knock gate on it as I said and we're then going to have the pump filtering the hydrogen out to put back into the thermal nullifier but also then sending all other waste gases out to space to vent them off and destroy them because that's just the easiest way of dealing with things it turns out okay so we need one person or one minor duplicate to come along and put in a, a power wire so we can get that sieve working and finally the sieve stuff be a flowing it's amazing it's brilliant look at that water flow oh, oh wait hang about what water's being picked up at three degrees centigrade but being output at 40 40 degrees centigrade man we are in a heat wave in the country i live in right now and we are not hitting 40 degrees centigrade how is this inventing like sorry creating extra heat out of the sieve i don't know if anybody has any ideas for that let me know so during my little heat rant there, we actually missed the fact that I put all the orders in place for the hydrogen detector up top to get hooked up. Turns out that I was missing power. I was originally going to think about putting some sort of power uh, transformer in between it and the main line, but I ended up just like shunting the main line straight into the uh, pump and detector. It turns out that worked out pretty well. Uh, still looking at the heat inside that hot water tank there. Cold water tank, sorry. We're, we're trying to make it cold. Uh, and it looks like it's not actually doing the job that it's supposed to be doing. If I look up at the thermal nullifier we're still seeing that everything is at 30 degrees there and it's just it is confusing i have figured it out post this video but whilst i'm still playing i i find it very confusing the fact that uh, everything seems to be just uh, i don't know sharing the same heat level as opposed to having a cold uh cold zone up the top which if you stop and think about it nice and hard actually makes sense but i didn't have time to stop and think about it nice and hard until i was doing this little voiceover now and then we get to talk about it and then i'm gonna be like very vague and stuff right yeah but anyway 
we've got this water at the top here that we've been trying to clean up for some time, just above uh, my, my cold water tank. Uh, and it turns out that there's just too much there. But every now and then a bit of um, normal water, non-polluted water drops in there. And you can tell Jim can go and mop that up. And then the uh, polluted water flows in and they'll mop that up as well. So I'm just basically waiting my time out. Okay, here we go. The uh, anti-hydrogen pumping device has actually started to work. And by slowly watching the overlay, we can see there are little bits of um, oxygen there that just need to like work their way back and forth before they can make their way through that gas vent. We've got no uh, pollution up here at all though, thankfully. Well, when I say pollution, I actually mean disease. We've got no disease up here at all. There's plenty of pollution. Anytime you see yellow water, it's polluted, but it's going uh, pretty well. Uh, I'm watching the temperatures here and I still can't help but notice that we're still at 30 degrees. And I was expecting the anti-entropy -ent anti thermal nullifier to actually be itself much lower than that. And I'm not entirely sure why not. Uh, I mean, I am now, but at the time I was nowhere near sure why not. So my first test is to maybe try and limit the amount of uh, hydrogen running through. Maybe we've got too much thermal mass. The uh, water has obviously heated up the hydrogen and not to mention the fact that hydrogen comes out of the uh, electrolyzer at 40 degrees, I think. I, I didn't actually double check that, but that was my thought process at the time. I was like, okay, maybe it can't cool things down slow enough. So what I'm gonna do is put a valve on the hydrogen line that spits hydrogen back into the area so that we don't have as much heat coming in and then hopefully the whole uh, anti-entropy machine can cool everything down enough. But it turns out, no, that's not the case. Even with restricted hydrogen uh, and start venting bits out and stuff like that, uh, things still get pretty toasty. I don't, I, I don't know why. I don't know why. We'll come back to that. We are putting one plan into play, so let's see what comes from uh, that. I'm going to spend a little bit of time having a look through my options for cooling here. I really want to uh, start this tank cooling down even quicker than what we've done, but it turns out that that might not actually be the case. One of the things that I've noticed here is that I have put my carbon dioxide uh, gas bridge down in the wrong direction, and we weren't losing any of the carbon dioxide from some of the other places that we're supposed to be picking them up so we're getting like loads of carbon dioxide down at the bottom of our base to the point where everything else was over pressurizing we were getting some troubles but thankfully this was something that i noticed and swapped out it turns out that the gas bridges have a little arrow on them they're like actual little arrow on them that for some reason i only noticed like this time or last time you know I noticed very recently uh, and you would have thought that i would have noticed before now i've got a feeling that actually it was part of the quality of life upgrade uh, where those actually came through but we now need to uh de-flood the anti-entropy null Fine device because it turns out it got flooded somehow. I'm not never sure how it gets flooded. Uh, I assume there's just like some some ice or something in there, and as everything warms up, it it just starts dropping down as it does. You know, when you warm up ice, you end up with water, even if it is polluted ice. So it turns out that the pump there just did did nothing. And also, the more that I think about it, sorry, the valve there did nothing. And the more that I think about it, the more I could just put one of the low level uh, vents on there, and then that will just stop over pressurizing when it gets to. I, I think it's two kilograms that it can't output at anymore. I do keep finding myself in this sort of situation where I put down one piece of technology and then suddenly like face palm myself and go, actually, it'd be a lot better if we didn't use a valve, but instead use the low order uh, gas vent because, the, you know, that basically does the same job. Yeah, I, I do keep finding myself there, so uh, we, we should try and keep an eye on that. Down in the oil refiner, we have this system there where I've got this pump pumping out all the waste gases, and all the waste gases were just going into the central corridor. And uh, this is a very bad plan. This is a very, 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 very bad plan. So I'm now going to class this pump down at the bottom here as a waste pump, and we're going to go through, put a whole bunch of filters on there so we can send the gases to the different places where they're going, such as we have the one next to the gas, that filter there will take the... Um, um, the natural gas and send it off to the natural gas uh, generators. We also have a carbon dioxide uh, filter there and that will send it off to the scrubbers so that that can also be cleaned. And thankfully we should be able to get through each single bit, uh, each of the gases that are in that room and slowly but surely uh, clean up all the waste gases that are here. I see that we also have some polluted oxygen that we're going to have to deal with, and I'm not entirely sure how we're going to deal with that. Even if we uh, take the moment to change it into not polluted oxygen, into actual oxygen, uh, this of course could just be breathed. I don't know. I, I'm, if you guys know what to do with the waste polluted oxygen, please let me know. I'm not entirely certain what to do with it. I mean, oxygen is also kind of a waste gas at this point. It is one that my duplicates need, but it is one that I am severely oversubscribed 
for. So, uh, yeah, we're going to have to try and figure out what's going on there. You might notice that I've been putting in a little bit of a, va uh, a valve there to try and regulate the amount of carbon dioxide going through. That is just to make sure that the carbon dioxide produced by the generators take the priority over the carbon dioxide that is waste gas being dealt with. You may have caught there that the printer put out a snazzy suit, and as my highest paid patron, I am going to give that immediately to Captain Sub so that he's just like a nice, happy chap there. All right, looking down at the water down below, there is a lot of water that we do not have access for, so I'm going to put in a whole a bunch of uh, build orders and dig orders just to make sure that all the water drains into the same area. The pump can pick it up, the sieve can purify it, and it all goes into our tank to be like ridiculously hot water. That's nah, all right. We'll deal with it. We'll deal with it. We're going to be pouring some cold water on top of it anyway. So the uh, anti-entropy thermal nullifying device still seems to be holding itself at a nice steady 32 degrees, which, uh, again, is not what we're after. But whilst we're up here having a look around, uh, we're going to do some things to stop water dripping down the main corridor that is the access way up and down here. Well, uh, I have also just noticed that I've actually locked my duplicates out of that area. But, you know, trying to stop the flooding is uh, probably a little bit more important. OK, so we're going to do a little bit of number balancing here. We're going to have a look at the petroleum generator and see that it outputs about 800 grams per second of carbon dioxide. And we're going to look at the carbon scrubber and see that it only clears half a kilogram. Uh, 800 is much more than 500, if you guys were not aware. Quick bit of maths there for you. Uh, and so for that, I need to actually completely redo the petroleum generator room. I, I need... I, I'm not going to do the quick numbers on the on the, on line, but it's roughly, roughly... Uh, three carbon scrubbers to two petroleum generators. I actually end up with 100 grams of carbon dioxide left over, but you know, whatever. We will uh, figure that out. So we're going we're gonna to do that. We're going to do ta two carbon scrubbers per uh, per uh, generator, and of course we need to deal with the wastewater as well, but that is also not that big of an issue. I have a look at the thermal nullifier again, and still 30 odd degrees. 32.9. It does seem to have dropped 0.1 degree. We were looking at 33 and now at 32.9, which, you know, is kind of progress. If we're going to look at it that way, it's kind of progress, but it's still, it just doesn't feel good enough. You know, we, we've dropped down from 40 to 39.2. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not about that. I'm not about that. We could do with a lot less, but lo looking at the thermal overlay, yeah, definitely seem to be some issues here. What I'm going to do is put down a whole bunch of thermal shift plates just to try and spread the heat out, but if I had actually engaged my brain at this point, I would have noticed that actually the heat is pretty easy evenly spread already and this was not an issue of ours though we've got people standing in the doorway duplicate sorry standing in the doorway to do the digging and uh, this is letting a lot of the oxygen in so we have to try and like move our duplicates around anybody that stands in the doorway i end up pausing the game telling them to move inside uh, and it ends up working out pretty well for us it's probably some uh, a level of micromanagement that is a step too far but you know we can we can just leave you know, it's not, not the end of the world. Uh, so after we put down a few of the uh, temperature shift plates, it turns out that uh, one of the materials that we were using ran out. I believe it was actually wolframite, just to see how thermally reactive we could make this area. Uh, but when we ran out of that, I just used something else that was thermally reactive. I'm going to assume it was something like igneous rock, but I cannot remember. To the top left of where we're working, you can see there is actually indeed some wolframite, but for some reason, I didn't actually connect the ladders up properly, so that there was no way that people could get to the digs uh, and in fact just a few moments I will realize this but also let's take a moment to have a look at this anti-entropy device and why is it not actually shifting any temperature around uh, actually it is guys and that is the problem it is just shifting temperature around so efficiently that it is taking on the temperature of the water down below which is fine because it needs to take on that temperature before it can destroy it right so we need to transfer all the heat from the water into the anti-entropy device which will then bit by bit try and take that down and the reason it is staying at 39 40 degrees is the fact that we're constantly pumping in new hot water for new heat to transfer and for it to try and then uh, get rid of new uh, new amounts of energy so it's saying for a little while that we've been trying to get rid of this water up here and indeed it's actually been since like the first time we actually dug this place out uh, but there's been enough normal water finally dripped into it that we can actually get through and mop the entire thing up. I've got a feeling some of the snow that we have down below is eventually going to get melted and then we're going to have the same problem but with nice clean water. But if it's with nice clean water, we could literally just dig a hole in the roof of the water tank and let it drop down there. Speaking of the water tank, the actual uh, colony water tank, the one where we put all the stuff to be stored, is actually starting to get a bit of a layer. It's not the same layer that we had earlier on. We were having like maybe a tile 
while of extra usage there, of extra overflow, sorry, there, but uh, not anymore. We are literally working uh, as much as we produce, we are consuming, which is not great, seeing as we have uncovered uh, at least one steam geyser. We should definitely be putting that to more use, especially as it, we are starting to actually come up on a year in this rock. Cycle 359, we are definitely getting there. The gas is flowing pretty well, actually, much better than I thought it was going to be flowing. Uh, but with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Have a look at the temperatures overlays. Let's look at all of these overlays. They are actually going to be telling us a lot of what is going on here. Next time, we're going to go around and try and do a whole a bunch of things from fixing up the petrol power plant to try and figure out what's going on with this water cooling. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!